So this is a Sinclair ZX81. Um, I'm gonna try and fix up and restore. I'm not sure if it's working or not, I've not tried it. Um, plan is, I'm gonna rip out the guts of the, the modulator. Um, replace the old linear regulator in the, the heat sink with a switching regulator. Um, heat sink the, well, heat sink the ULA and the, and the Z80. Uh, the ROM should be okay. And uh, as you see here, we've got 1K, two lots of uh, 1K 4-bit, 1K 4-bit. So we've got one by, one, 1K by 8 bits. So I'll replace those. So you've got space there for a fit in a 28 pin SRAM. So I'll, I'll make it 16K at least, and I'll try, I'll go for the 32K upgrade. I've not done that one before. Um, but that's the plan. Um, and also replace, I think the keyboard prop looks okay. The keyboard tails look okay, actually. Look pretty good, pretty good condition. So it's probably quite usable still. Um, but I might as well just replace that. I've got a replacement one. So I'll replace that as well. So first thing to do will be to, to pull this apart. And um, what I've been doing is just ripping the guts out, unsoldering the whole can actually. Unsolder the whole can, rip everything out, and then just put in the, um, put in the buffer. For the uh, the composite out, so let's see how I go. So that's the modulator there. So what I have been doing is just on soldering those two there, and the whole thing pops off. And I'm not too worried about the the existing wires. I've just been putting new wires in. Um, and then just put in a simple um, buffer and see if that works. So right, let's see. Okay, the modulator's off, nice and easy. Just those two on the bottom. Um, you can see here all the different possible settings, I guess. So I don't need to worry about too much about that. So. Next, I believe what I did last time is I eased this off. Use a just gently don't put through your hand, Brett. Don't do that. Just ease it off. Don't put your finger there in case you slip. I need to clean a bit more of the solder off. So it'll pop off. Pop off your. Yeah. Do 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 do. Da da da. Yeah, I might need to get a little bit more solder off there. So it'll slip off over it. Yep, all right. Back in a moment. Okay, yep. Just had to uh, tidy the solder up a little bit. And it came off. So you can see on the bottom here, we've got a lot of solder holding the, uh, the modulator circuit board in on the corners. So, and then you've got some... Uh, Probably can't see it with my light. You've got some little bits there that are actually holding the circuit board down. So circuit board needs to go through the bottom. But to do that, you need to unsolder these bits here. And then you can push it through there. I actually probably want to... I might snip. So I want to keep this socket might snip that off first, then I'll unsolder 
those bits and hopefully can push it through. So finally, we result we uh, <coughs> end up with this. So this is the, the modulator. Don't need that anymore. And this is basically the modulator can that we're going to reuse. So this will go back on the bottom. Now that we've got the circuit board out, actually that goes around that way. Just like, like that. Um, I might do the circuit first. Sorry, blinding me there. But basically, yeah, that just goes back on like that. On the bottom like that. Then this insulator goes on the bottom, actually, like that. And then we'll have our simple little circuit. Actually, because I've, I've been doing this on um, TS-1000, so they've got the RCA socket up this end rather than that end, so it's uh, a lot neater. But I can still do it. I'll use these two holes here, I guess, to bring it in. And that goes back on top, and then we can remount it onto the board nice and neat. So I'll grab where's my TS-1000 I'm working on. So this is the TS-1000 I've been doing. So that's kind of what I've uh, got the naming to end up with. But that was much simpler than just bodging it on top of the existing circuit board. Well, that was a bit neater. So I just run in new cable through the bottom. And then we just have the resistor soldered directly in as well, straight through. So, but for this one, as you can see here, TS-1000 on the right, ZX81 on the left, it's slightly different. But I'm sure I can figure it out. So here's the end result. Not too bad. We've got the collector connected to 5 volts. The base in the middle is con collect <laughs> collected, connected. So here's the end result. I've got the collector connected to 5 volts. The base is connected to uh, pin 16 of the ULA for the video. And then the emitter is connected to the to the video out there. And um, plug her in. Ta-da! So seems to be uh, seems to be working fine. The only thing is, so the next thing to do will be to replace this linear regulator. It's quite hot very quickly, so I'll replace that and I'll also upgrade the memory, put some heat sinks on, and um, put on this brand new keyboard membrane. And it should be all good to go. So here's what I like to use a little Traco power switching, uh, switching converter. It is pretty much a drop in replacement the old linear regulator. Pop it in like that. Yeah. Very skilled videographer as you can tell. Anyway, I'll set that up. Here's the end result. Be very careful with these older circuit boards. If you apply too much heat, the, uh, the pads can come off. So that's what I had to happen here. So I just had to just double Double check, add a couple of bridging wires um, for the uh, input 9 volts on the ground, make sure it's all connected. So that should be the linear regulator that I was at before. Oh boy, it got very hot very quick. So, you know, dropping 9 volts down to 5, it, um, yeah, very inefficient. So, um, this is uh, an amazing little thing. So, I'll just now make sure that. That still works. Then I'll probably heat sink, heat sink, uh, not the ROM, heat sink the the CPU and the ULA, and then I'm going to chop, chop these two um, SRAMs off, uh, drill out the holes for the 28 pins, uh, put a new socket on, 
and then do the the 16k upgrade so here we go work in progress i've just um i just chopped the legs off I'm lazy like that i've started um drilling out the holes using a good old hand drill or stanley hand drill that i've uh Restored, well, partially restored. <laughs> restored that bit. Um, yeah, so just drilling out the holes. Um, and then put on a nice 28 pin socket. So I'm not sure which way to do the ram. There's two ways. You can either cut tracks, the permanent method, or you can bend legs up. So that's reversible. So say you wanted to um, go from 16K back down to 2K, like on the TS-1000. You can rip the 16K out and put a 2K back in there. Um, if you do it the reversible way, but I don't think anyone's going to do that. So um, I might do the uh, track cutting method. I just need to finish off these holes here. And I'll figure out what, cut, what tracks I want to cut. I've got some um, was it quad NAND gates as well, so if you want to um, use the full 32k of RAM, you can use one of these to um, to be able to use that extra address line. Let's see, I've only done the 16k before, so um, I can get the 16k working. I'm not too sure about the 32k. Let's see. 